is a former NFL tight end and coach. He's currently living his best life with his awesome wife, Diane, out on the West Coast and is the host of the terrific Odds and Ends podcast. You know him best as the head coach of the Vikings from 02 to 05. Please welcome Mike Tice. Coach, it's great to have you on the Soda Stream. How you doing? What's going on, Devin? <laughs> My man. How you uh, it's doing? Been good, good. Life is good. You, uh, how's, that how are married, you guys? how's that married life treating you? Oh, it's terrific. And uh, having you guys there meant, uh, meant everything in the world to us. Beautiful, um, <laughs> beautiful day. Beautiful day. I appreciate that. It, uh, it, was really, it was really great having you there. And uh, now we've got to get into some rapid fire questions. So I hope you're ready. Okay. Ra- rapid fire questions. Yeah. Okay, here we go. First, uh, just whatever, whatever comes to mind. All right. And yes. all right, so would you rather spend the rest of your life completely blind or in an olive garden? Uh, in an olive garden. Yeah, I get that. Uh, all you can eat breadsticks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you were given an all expenses paid trip to Cleveland, would you take it? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Uh, hot dish or hot dish or casserole? Hot dish, of course. There you go, my man. <laughs> If a movie was made about your life, who would be the actor that played you? Fred Gwynn. Ooh, all right. That's a deep cut there. Uh, I like that you knew that right away, too. <laughs> uh, would you rather have the he- your head be the size of a tennis ball or the size of a watermelon? Mm. I just broke my coaster. <laughs> oh, no. Go ahead, say that again. Uh, would you rather have your head be the size of a tennis ball or the size of a watermelon? Oh, geez. Uh, size of a watermelon. All right. Minneapolis or St. Paul? Minneapolis. All right. Now, in an act of self-defense, how many fifth graders do you think you could fend off? Oh, my God. At one I time. Would, I wouldn't even think of that. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Fifteen. All right. I could see that. Yeah. Um, would you rather wear a shirt that's kind of itchy or a pair of shoes that has a small little rock in it that you just can't get out? Oh, a pair of shoes with a rock. Really? All right. And what do you think is more realistic, ghosts or aliens? Ghosts. All right. And if you have one sport to watch the rest of your life, what is it? Horse racing. All right. Nice. That's good. 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 Uh, well, appreciate, appreciate you, uh, stepping into that. Um, so as we're kind of, you know, moving in there, uh, I really have been curious. Well, first of all, I hope your coaster, you said it broke. It oh no. Break. It did not break. There we go. <laughs> My water glass stuck to it. Yeah. I saw, I saw it like come up on the, uh, the stream. I think, there. It, got, I think it got sticky from the margarita I had in it the other day. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good, that's as good a reason as any to have one get sticky, right? Right, no kidding, right? <laughs> uh, have, you, uh, have you guys been enjoying, and I guess as many margaritas as you want, because you can't really go anywhere. No, you can't go anywhere. Happy hour is a, is a tough thing now, because it's like almost daily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, if I'm, if I'm remembering, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Washington is uh, one of the more heavily impacted states, no? Well, it's where it started, where the COVID-19, uh, COVID-19 started. Uh, yeah. We haven't had the most deaths or the most cases. I think our governor has done a nice job of officially locking down the state on March 23rd. Yeah. Don't like it, but we're still alive. Yeah, kind of a necessary uh, evil, so to speak. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that you guys are, you know, Hanging in there and doing well. I saw that I saw on your Twitter that you and uh, you guys are starting to do some puzzles. Did you uh, do you finish any of them yet? We finished one and we started another. All right. Yeah, we finished What's... one on New York City, which was ironic, but uh, yeah, that was the only puzzle we had downstairs that wasn't a Christmas puzzle. <laughs> so, what puzzle are you working on now? Oh, uh, we're just working on the puzzle that my sister gave me. That was my mom's. So. She's Mo sent it to me, and uh, and uh, so we started that one. It's just, nice. it's just like a scene, nothing extraordinary. Okay, gotcha. Um, 
Well, so I mentioned that I, I had seen your things on Twitter. Uh, I did actually want to give you a little bit of a, a, a <laughs> some praise, I guess, on, on the Twitter account, because I've gotten a little kick out of uh, every once in a while, I'll see somebody say just something unnecessary, like just out of nowhere. Like there was one tweet recently where somebody responded to a tweet that was like, Mike Tice is a tool, and you just responded, you're like, thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I think that I started tweeting about July, I thought, you know, it was necessary with trying to do the podcast. And yeah. um, also, I started tweeting for uh, Dynamite Foundation. So that was nice. But, yeah. every, you know, every once in a while, there's some tool out there that, you know, tweets something stupid. You yeah. know, he has his forum. And then I usually check. And most of the times, those guys that tweet have like 15 followers. So yeah. I, find, I find it that, you know, this is their chance as losers to uh, jump out there and, and get a forum. So I always, yeah. you know, send the heart back, you know, like the tweet. And then I'll, you know, said to this last particular person, hope you're home and safe. You yeah, know? no, I think, I, I, I think that's a great way to handle it too. Cause I mean, I just know your personality. I know that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a classy way to, to handle it, but it's also so silly cause it just takes the wind completely out of their sails. Yeah, really. Where are you going to go from there? Yeah, it's not like, what's he going to do? Come back and be like, yeah, well, uh, you're still a tool. <laughs> right. Good one. Good one, man. Um, so I know you mentioned that, uh, you know, you, you're, if, you go, if you're stuck watching one sport, it'd be horse racing. How, how long have you been, you know, watching, watching horses and, and riding the ponies? Well, I started following the horses when I went to Maryland, University of Maryland. They had a couple of real nice tracks there, Pimlico, Laurel. Bowie, Timonium, uh, when my friend Billy Clinky, who you know, little Billy, uh, uh, became a jockey, I really got into it. So in the mid eighties, uh, really was when I, you know, first started to have any money. And when I first started to, uh, enjoy going to the racetrack and bought, Diane and I bought our first horses in 1985. Oh, wow. I didn't realize it was that early. Yeah. How'd that horse do? Uh, one of them won after a few races and the other one won its first race that it ever ran. So that was pretty nice. cool. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And you and, know, my I friend mean, Billy, and you know, my friend Billy, the little, yeah, little, guy. little guy. Yeah. He wrote it. <laughs> so, so that was cool. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I knew that, uh, I knew when, by the time that, you know, you guys got up to Minnesota and, and we, uh, got to know you guys, I know that, uh, obviously you'd gotten pretty well established within within the horses uh you know in terms of really like knowing everything and knowing who's who and i think is that around the time that you guys started going to the derby every year yeah and i took your mom and dad to the derby too yeah i remember that uh that was uh i was like kind of jealous because i always enjoyed going to canterbury uh whenever we would do that but uh canterbury does a nice job yeah i like i like everything you know you get to make it out to canterbury what are your thoughts? Um, I know Canterbury does, you know, a couple times a year, they do like the like silly races, like they'll do like the wiener dogs and like the camels and stuff. Do you like those as much or not as much as the horses? Well, me, I go out to bet the horses and look at the horses sure. and get and get the smells and watch the people. You know, some people go out there to spend a day and take the kids out and we used to take our kids out on Fridays and you know, some people don't like to wager or bet. So giving them more things to do, I think it's, it's a form of entertainment. So yeah, I don't mind mm -hmm. the, you know, camel races or the hot dog races with the little dogs. And uh, they have those here in Seattle at Emerald Downs as well. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was wondering about that. How close are you guys to uh, Emerald Downs? Quite a ways. We're about an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. You still be, are you still able to make it out there we don't, we don't there. Go, no we don't go out there much okay you guys uh you got i'm trying to think the derby was not able to happen this year right because of all this supposed stuff to be this supposed to be saturday we're supposed to have been there so yeah uh, adrian texted me today that's my daughter adrian um yeah. we'd be heading to uh louisville right now so thursday friday saturday we had rented a house so uh, fortunately yeah. the people were nice and gave us our deposit back. So that was good. Well, that's nice. Yeah. And I've, I've heard a lot of, uh, horror stories about people basically saying like, well, we got screwed too. So like, we're not, we're keeping your money. Yeah. Um, we got lucky. 
Yeah, are they, uh, is, is, is the Derby planning on rescheduling later this summer or? They rescheduled for Labor Day weekend, but we'll see how things go. Um, yeah. I personally think they're still iffy to, to run the Derby and, uh, you know, have the Derby with people at it. And I'm not sure that I can't speak for Churchill Downs, but I'm not sure they'd want to run the Derby without the pageantry and the people. Yeah, I can't. I mean, that's, you know, I would say that's a, a good big part of why the Derby is so special is seeing all the people and the, the pageantry, as you put it. That's a great way to put it. Um, Absolutely. I mean, would you would you go if it was if they say like, you know, either you know, people that have owned a horse before, basically, and that kind of cuts off a, a lot of the people, they put a limit on there, would you go to that or? Well, we're, we're talking about it. We're playing with the idea. I mean, you know, the one thing I have to look at is <laughs> not to be funny, but would I be able to resell my tickets? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. Know, I have a lot of money invested in those tickets and uh, some yeah. nice, so if I can't you know, get that money back or, or if, if Churchill Downs allowed us, which I think they should, to uh, use your seat license and your ticket, because we had to pay for the tickets and everything up front mm -hmm. for next year, without a doubt, I would just use it for next year. Cause you know, yeah. going to Derby on Labor Day weekend, I'm in football mode, man. You know? Yeah. Yeah. The only, the point. only horse racing I'm thinking about when football starts is the Breeders' Cup and that's not till November. So. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of, speaking of football, it seemed like, uh, I mean, the, we all know that the draft is just the, especially now is so incredible to have a, a nice distraction like that. What did you think of, uh, what'd you think of the way that they did the draft this year? I thought they did a nice job, you know, based on, you know, what they had to work with. I think the commissioner could have had a little bit, uh, more flair to him, but that's not the way he is. He's not a, yeah. he's not a, you know, he's not a comedian and he's not a, a out there in front guy. So uh, he was a little stale, but uh, yeah. I thought they did a good job based on what they had to, you know, accomplish. And uh, it was the most watched draft in the history. So obviously the fans are yearning for something new besides mm -hmm. replays of the, uh, you know, 2015 Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> what did you, uh, I know that, I know that uh, the Vikings drafted a guy from kind of over in your neck of the woods, Ezra Cleveland. Um, yeah. Yeah. He's from uh, Spanaway here in Washington, Bethel high school, yeah. uh, Boise state kid. Uh, I looked at him. I spoke about him on the podcast. He was not in my, I only did the first rounders or who I thought were first rounders on my podcast, mm -hmm. but he was, a uh, young uh, player that I did mention and yeah. gave him a shout out, especially since he's local boy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I, I remember hearing that on, on, on your pod. Uh, <clears throat> do you think that, you know, is he, I guess, factoring in the fact too, that there's not going to be the same off season program, but do you think that he is uh, a guy that could potentially come in and challenge Riley Reef, <clears throat> Riley Reef for the starting job? Well, I think he's going to have to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Riley's more, in my opinion, a right side player, and there needed to be some form of an upgrade there on the left side. Mm -hmm. uh, this this young kid, Ezra Cleveland, he's uh, he's athletic. I'm sure he's, yeah. he's I, I, he looks smart. I haven't interviewed him, so I couldn't tell you, but he looks like he knows what he's doing. When you watch tape on him, you don't see, you know, a a, a bunch of mental errors, if any. So mm -hmm. it's a matter of can he, you know, pass protect on third down and, and when they have to drop back and pass, because I think that's the biggest issue with the Vikings offensive line is when the quarterback needs to drop back and the whole world knows it's drop back time. Uh, quite frankly, the Vikings offensive line hasn't been able to hold up. Yeah. And obviously you have a very long and uh, successful history with fixing uh, not great offensive lines. Uh, is there anything that pops out to you that, you know, they could be doing better specifically? Well, it starts with getting better players in and, you know, okay. it starts with moving players that you uh, can count on like O'Reilly Reef to probably a position that favors his athletic skill set a little bit more. Mm -hmm. 
And so you mentioned that you see him as kind of a right side player. I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of members in the media that that think about these types of things speculate that there's a scenario where he transitions to either a left or a right guard. Is that is that a position that you think he would be successful in? When I graded him coming out, I graded him as an, an inside player um, mm -hmm. or a right tackle. And uh, okay. he's had a tremendous career. Uh, he's, he's got a lot of character. He's, he's uh, done things for the team that are not really what he's supposed to be doing. He's not supposed to be the left tackle. So yeah. good for him. And so they'll find a place for Riley Reef if it's not the left tackle position, uh, where he can help the team win. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, what about uh, last year's uh, last year's uh, right tackle? I believe he's in the second round. Brian O'Neill. Uh, he was supposed. He was another kid that was kind of a big, athletic guy that uh, was not super polished. Uh, but he came in, and I thought he played pretty well last year at the the right tackle spot. Do you see him as somebody that could be could be a left tackle, or is right tackle kind of a best best place for him? You know, I don't know. I don't know that. You know, I haven't really studied his movement skills. Uh, I, I find it hard to believe that they're going to start flip-flopping guys. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, instead of making one change where you bring in a new player and then move another player to one position, you start flip-flopping guys and making multiple moves. Um, you know, it's not like their offensive line was terrible. So yeah. I just think they need to uh, – obviously, they can run the ball. They need to make some changes in regards to – you know, pass protecting when the whole world knows you're going to drop back and throw the ball. Right. All right. Uh, what did you think about the uh, the Vikings draft just overall? I know, I know, just from following along that you were you were following it pretty closely. How do you think that the the team did, Rick and Rick and company? I thought they did an outstanding job. They made some really smart trades. You know, I thought trading back with that second pick in the first round was an outstanding move. Mm -hmm. Picking up Jefferson, uh, you know, the wide receiver uh, yeah. from LSU to add to the uh, signing of Sharp from Tennessee, a player that I liked uh, when he was at Tennessee. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's a good move right there. Then they just kind of put a fishing net over a lot of areas where they had some uh, needs to improve, uh, getting another pass rusher for Daniil Hunter. Uh, they obviously, they got Pierce in free agency as an inside player, mm -hmm. Michael Pierce from the Ravens, good young player, active young player and getting this tackle Ezra Cleveland and then uh, uh, being able to sign back a couple of their young free agent offensive linemen. I think uh, they went out and threw a fishing net and brought in some defensive players you know, you get that many players. They had 13 picks, I believe, in the second and third day, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. And being able to, you know, bring in a lot of players instead of having to fight for them in college free agency is going to help them uh, retool that cornerback, cornerback position where they lost three players yeah. you know, in free agency. Um, I think that I think overall, I, I, don't, I didn't look at any of the grades from any of the other sites, but I certainly would give the Vikings a B plus or an A minus. Nice. Was there, was there any other teams uh, that you thought had just a really outstanding draft, even better than the Vikings? You know, I really didn't go back through the drafts yet, Devin. I'm working mm -hmm. on the Arkansas Derby for this week. So sure. I moved from, you know, one project to study to the next. Um, I've been involved in uh, studying the horse racing for the first couple of days this week. Have not really circled back around and looked at, like I said, any of the grades that the teams got from mm -hmm. you know, some of these sites or know-it-alls uh, or, uh, yeah. you know, really what, what the other teams, uh, you know, did pick up. And as far as their needs were concerned, I know I did chart all the needs for all the teams and all their free agent moves, plus and minus. Mm -hmm. And now I'll go back through here in the next couple of weeks and look at, you know, their additions via the draft and also you got to look at these late free agent signings some of these veteran guys that were teams were sitting waiting on until after the draft to see what holes they were able to fill during the draft yeah i mean i know that uh at, at the, the time that we're recording this the free agent quarterback market is unusually strong right now with uh you know cam and andy dalton just got released uh, earlier 
<coughs> excuse me, and I think Flacco's still around. So it's and then you know, Cam a, signed a one year deal with um oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank right now, but Cam's off the street right now. Oh, with uh did he go to Green Bay? Where did he Cam Newton go? I can't even think. Oh, New Orleans. Yeah, Cam uh, went to New Orleans. Yeah. So I thought uh, that was I think that was Jameis Winston. Oh, you're right. Jameis Winston, yeah. You're yeah. You're right. Yeah, that just happened. One year uh, one year deal, right? Yeah, yeah. One year with a a lot of pretty heavy playing incentives. So it seems yeah. yeah. Seems to me, at least from a contract standpoint, that if something happens to Breeze that it would be Jameis going in and not uh Sean Payton's golden boy, Taysom Hill. <laughs> well, maybe they don't see him as a full time quarterback. So. Yeah. Hard to say. Have you? I mean, I know you guys, especially that. Uh, I think it was the '03 team where you guys got really fun and creative with uh, with the offense. I mean, is there? Have you guys? Do you guys have any players that you used in that kind of gadget role that stick out? You know, when we were with the Raiders, uh, you know, we were able to have. You know, as you know, the Vikings had him, Cordell Patterson, for a mm -hmm. year. We were trying to do some things with him, wildcat wise, and in different ways, trying to get him more touches. Mm -hmm. uh, that didn't really seem to pan out. Uh, probably didn't get him enough touches, but, uh, you know, he was one of those, you know, hybrid type players that you're trying to get more touches and you try to find creative ways to get him more touches. But he's one that stands out and he has kind of made a career of that in the NFL. Yeah, no, it definitely has. Um, I mean, thinking back to, especially to your, uh, to your Vikings days and uh, all that, do you, if you think back on, I know you've been in the locker room with hundreds, if not thousands of different players, but are there any players that jump out to you as some of the funniest guys that have like, just like a good funny story or anything? Well, everybody's got their own personalities. There's a lot of guys that have had moments of, uh, you know, hilariousness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of those guys that, uh, you know, always was comical and, and uh, always had, in fact, now he's doing stand-up comedy is Matt Burke from St. Paul, Minnesota. He, yeah. Uh, he always seemed to have a uh, little tidbit for you to put a little smirk on your face. So. Yeah. Is Burke, so did Burke ever do stand-up like for the team or just like go around making jokes with everybody? <laughs> no, he never did stand-up. So I'm going to give you one more question. I got to go do a podcast with Hall of yeah. Fame trainer Bob Baffert say, I, here in a second. I know, <laughs> excuse me, I was going to say, I know that uh, you, you've got to run here. Um, so we really appreciate it. Uh, I was actually hoping uh, that you could give me one quick story. Because uh, for those who don't know, uh, you and my dad coached together. Uh, dad, my dad was on your staff for uh, the whole time. And uh, you guys have been good friends for 20, 25 years almost. And uh, I was hoping that you could give me a quick story that would uh, embarrass him the next time I talked to him. Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> uh, so, so we used to, you know, coach the offensive line together. Dean was my assistant. Yeah. And uh, we were in the indoor facility and the guys were running. They're 40. And I can't recall if they were running it for time or they were running it in an off-season program. Well, Dino decides he's going to run with the guys. Your dad pulled both mm -hmm. hamstrings. <laughs> both hamstrings never seen it happen before both hamstrings running with the guys finished he didn't go down but for about two three weeks your dad's back of your dad's legs were purple he could have been the viking mascot <laughs> he, his legs were so purple he could have been the viking mascot oh that's good yeah, yeah that's, that's really that's good. my embarrassing dean dalton story but i appreciate that doing really well your dad's worked really hard and is doing extremely well with his project i'm really happy for him and really proud of him so yeah no everything is uh coming along great there and and we hey, i really want to i know you got to run so we'll i'll let you get to it but i want to say thank you so much for hopping on the soda stream and uh Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Mike. Uh, you guys uh, can, you guys want to, you want to plug your podcast real quick? Well, I do a podcast on YouTube, not necessarily weekly, but it'll be weekly if we ever get to NFL football season. That's Odds and Ends with Mike Tice on YouTube. And uh, you can tweet us at Odds and Ends Pod. That's O D D S, the letter N, E N D S Pod. And so uh, appreciate it. If you all tune in, it's free. Subscribe. And uh, this week we have the Arkansas Derby. And like I said, I'm getting ready to tape a Zoom interview with Hall of Fame trainer Bob Baffert. Awesome.
Thank you so much, Mike. Coach, really appreciate you hopping on the soda stream. Have a great one. All right, one. Deb. Be good. All right, man. Peace.